it's okay if I erase this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me, I'll just do it below then. The third one is a minor. The third chord. The third chord. Wait, wait. This you third no, chord no, here no. or third? Yeah, third chord here is a minor seven. Okay. You know, and, and again, um, if you really need to be specific, you would say it's a minor minor seven. But more often than not, you can just say a minor seven chord, and anybody will understand what you say. If you say minor seven. Um, so the reason the dominant seventh is so strong um, is because it, so it's a, it's a dominant triad, right, plus that seventh on top. And when you put that seventh on top, between the third of the chord and the seventh of the chord, we have a tritone. Right, the notes B and F are a tritone. And the tritone, we know, is a very dissonant interval. And for dissonance, it requires revolution. I uh, resolution, revolution. <laughs> requires revolution. <laughs> Viva la resolución. Revolución. No, Viva la resolución. <laughs> Los revolucionarios. Yeah. Uh, we need, for dissonance, we need resolution. And so that tritone provides us with a really strong dissonance requiring resolution. And what normally happens is that, that um, the leading tone, right? So if we're in the key of C major, this B is the leading tone. The leading tone wants to resolve up. And the seventh wants to resolve down. Sometimes we talk about it in solfeggio terms. T to do and fa to mi. You know, we want to have that resolution, uh, even when we're thinking of just a scale, you know. T to do, you know, fa, mi, we want, we want that resolution. And so try to, we expect it to resolve that way. Okay. And, and actually, when the tritone is inverted, so let's say we take that same tritone and invert the interval, so put that F down on the bottom, those tendency tones still have the tendency to resolve as they, as we, they normally would. So T will still go up to Do, and Fa will still go down to Me. Okay. That's why it's important. Um, in a harmonic context, how you spell these tritones, especially, but uh, any other interval. But so, um, let's take for example this tritone. Okay, if I spell it like that, then the F sharp is probably going to go up to the G, and the C is going to come down to the B. But if I instead spell it, um, what was I thinking? Oh. Oh, like, like this, okay. Then the B sharp becomes a leading tone to C sharp, and this becomes the seventh that's going to resolve down to C. See, it's the same sounding interval, but depending on how I spell it, it's going to tend to resolve differently. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Don't mind me. <laughs> Does that make sense? So how you, we'll get to this later on as we go through the harmony, but how you resolve this tritone is really important in traditional harmony. How it's spelled, how it's spelled is different from how it's resolved. Yeah. So no matter uh, how you put it, you still always want to eat it there on the bottom e. Yeah, so you still want to, well, so when you determine, you know, like, so in the key of G, this would be T resolving to Do, and this would be Fa resolving to Me, right? But in the key of C sharp minor, this would be T resolving to Do, and this would be Fa resolving to Me. See? So, um, so depending on how you spell it determines with where you're at in the key, you know, or what, uh, how it's going to resolve. Now, sometimes composers will play off on those differences and, and go from G major to C sharp minor in a heartbeat just because they can respell it. But we're not there yet. <laughs> Um, we're dealing more just with the basic things, but I just want to emphasize it is important because 
Um, you know, sometimes people will spell intervals in weird ways just because it's more convenient, but it's not necessarily correct um, because you need to you need to look at the context that, that that's in. You know, I always like to use the word red. You know, if I say spell the word red, you can spell it two different right ways, right? You can spell R E D or you can spell it R E A D. And if I say the book is red, then that gives it context, and you know I want you to spell it R E D. But again, if I just give you, say, spell the word red, you've got two options, you don't know which one. So the same is true of the tritone. If I just give, play you a tritone and say spell it, then you can spell it any way you want. But if I say now we're in this certain context and I resolve it, then you have to spell it a certain way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the, in the dominant seventh, you've got that tritone, which is a very powerful interval, and it has to be resolved very carefully. Right? So hold that thought in your head. A little bit. We're going to get back to that, but I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about the figured bass for seven. That's how they're.